Our mutual friend, Dickens's last great completed novel, dealing with capital, as in money and as in London, and with love in its many and varied forms. It's the novel that's closest to us in time, but the one about which, from a bibliographical perspective, the least has been known until now, with the publication of my guide to the lifetime editions of the author's works. The first edition is generally unproblematic, with the work initially appearing in the standard monthly parts between May 1864 and November 1865. It was then published in book form in two volumes which became available at different times, Volume 1 in February and Volume 2 in November 1865. It's important to note though that no new sheets were printed for this book issue first edition. The volumes were simply made up from unsold sets of the monthly parts. So far so good. But what came next in the shelf life of this remarkable novel is far from straightforward. What I'm going to do is pose and then answer four questions that have only been resolved in the course of my recent research. 1. Why is the cheap edition so scarce? 2. Was there a people's edition of Our Mutual Friend? 3. When was the Illustrated Library edition published in Britain? 4. What and when was the second edition of the novel? Well, here's a copy of the cheap edition, so that's proof positive that it does exist. But where else can you find copies? Not in the British Library for a start, nor the Bodleian, nor Cambridge University Library, the other so-called deposit libraries in England, all of which are supposed to receive and give shelf space to all books printed in Britain. Indeed, the only known copy in a public collection in Britain is in the Dickens Museum Library in London. So what's the story behind the extreme scarcity of this edition? The cheap edition was launched way back in 1847 with the Pickwick Papers and added to, in fits and starts, over the following 20 years. By 1867, the publishers Chapman and Hall knew that they had to issue Our Mutual Friend in the cheap edition, both to keep the set up to date and to satisfy collectors of this uniform format. However, they also knew that they would shortly be issuing the novel in the newly launched Charles Dickens edition, which began appearing in monthly volumes in 1867. This was intended to replace the cheap edition as an even cheaper and better edition, priced at three and sixpence rather than five shillings, and containing eight plates as opposed to the solitary frontispiece adorning volumes in the cheap edition. Faced with this dilemma, and predicting a low demand, the publishers ordered a sole printing of just 2,000 copies. By contrast, the smallest print run for any earlier volume in the cheap edition was 5,000 copies, with at least 50,000 copies of Pickwick being printed in this format over the 20-year life of the series. So, this cheap edition of Our Mutual Friend went on sale in November 1867, although it was dated 1868 on the title page. No precise sales figures have survived, but extrapolating from data in the publisher's archive, it would seem that only about 500 copies were sold, with the rest being remaindered to the booksellers W.H. Smith, about which I'll have more to say in a minute or two. The purchasers would appear to have been largely collectors wishing to complete their sets, whilst the rest of the reading public waited until the Charles Dickens edition, which had already been announced, appeared just a few months later. Which brings us to the second question. The People's Edition was initiated in 1865 and was intended for railway travellers as handy reading matter while on a journey. The books were flimsily bound in bright green paper-covered boards and were never intended to have a long shelf life. The series was published at the rate of a volume a month over two years and a total of roughly 300,000 volumes were sold in this format. The scarcity of these delicate items is shown by the fact that a recent search turned up just one copy of one title in the original binding available for purchase from online booksellers anywhere in the world. When this series started to appear, Our Mutual Friend was still in the course of publication in monthly parts. The edition was projected for issue in 25 volumes ending with American Notes and not including Our Mutual Friend and the publishers duly stuck to their plan. So why do several highly respected sources maintain that the series was made up of 27 volumes, the last two being the two volumes of Our Mutual Friend? 
Now this is where things start to get tricky. Chapman and Hall remained at all their unsold stock of both the cheap edition and the people's edition to the booksellers W.H. Smith in 1869, as they were devoting all their attention to marketing the even cheaper Charles Dickens edition. In the deal, W.H. Smith received a miscellany of weekly and monthly parts, bound copies, unsewn sections and partially blocked cases, together with printing plates enabling them to create still further copies. In a truly unoriginal move, their marketing strategy was to conflate Chapman and Hall's cheap edition and people's edition into their own, wait for it, brilliantly named people's edition which does indeed include our mutual friend. Had there truly been a publisher's people's edition of this novel, it would, like the other long novels, have been issued in two volumes, separately paginated and presumably dated 1867 on the title pages. As it is, the only known copies are bound in one volume in W.H. Smith's half-leather binding, continuously paginated and dated 1868 on the title page. They use the remainder sheets of the cheap edition and are not, and never were, part of the original People's Edition. <sighs> Phew. Having negotiated a way through that bibliographical minefield, be prepared for an even trickier one. Oh no! Here we go then. Some scholarly sources say that the first illustrated library edition appeared in Britain in 1867, while others say 1869. While working on my bibliography, I was assiduously tracking down copies of relevant editions. But until 2019, the only dated copies of Our Mutual Friend in this format and in the UK red cloth binding that I'd been able to find were dated 1869. Here, though, is an American set naming the publishers on the title pages as Tickner and Fields of Boston above Chapman and Hall and dated 1867. If we turn over to the imprint, we can see that it notes Bradbury and Evans of London as the printers, indicating that these copies were intended for export. Even more interestingly, just above this, there's an exclusivity statement recording that Tickler and Fields were Dickens' sole authorised publishers in the United States, the statement being dated April 1867 and signed by Dickens himself. So there was an 1867 edition, but were any copies put on sale in Britain? In early drafts of my bibliography, I pretty much dismissed this idea, as no copies have come to light in any major public or private collections in the past 150 years. However, in January 2019, I took delivery of a near complete set of the illustrated library edition assembled in the 1860s by a young lawyer named Edward Big. Let's call him Mr. Big. And amongst the 20 plus volumes in the original red cloth was a two volume set of Our Mutual Friend dated on the title pages, not 1869 or 1867, but 1866. A possibility that no scholarly sources had even hinted at. So here we have another world exclusive first documented in my June 2020 article in Dickens Quarterly. The additional questions that now arise are, how can this 1866 edition be accounted for? And how has it totally escaped notice until now? Story time. In order to understand what was going on with Dickens and his UK publishers around this time, we need to bear in mind that after the end of the Civil War in the United States, the author was making preparations for a lengthy reading tour in North America, which promised to provide a substantial boost to his income. Through his personal friendship with James Field, one partner in the publishing firm of Tickner and Fields, Dickens agreed to enter into an exclusivity arrangement with them, whereby they would be the sole authorised purveyors of his works in the country. Let's not forget that there was no international copyright at that time and Dickens was furious with numerous other American publishers who pirated his works and from whom he received not a brass cent in payment. The deal stipulated that sheets of the illustrated library edition and all the original illustrations would be printed in Britain before being shipped over to Boston 
where they were bound up for the American market. One stumbling block was the proviso that our mutual friend, Dickens's most recent novel, should be included in the series and available as merchandise at the various stops on Dickens's reading tour. Given that Chapman and Hall still had unsold copies of the first edition on their hands and were planning to issue it in the cheap edition, which proved a commercial failure, it was predictable that there would be little or no demand for an expensive illustrated library edition of this novel in Britain. However, in anticipation of the need to produce copies for the American market, they asked the printing firm of William Clowes to set up new type for our mutual friend in the format required by the illustrated library edition. A few trial copies were run off in late 1866 and sent to Chapman and Hall. The publishers then made various changes to the preliminary pages and gave an order to Bradbury and Evans, their regular printers, to run off a thousand sets for the American market with the exclusivity statement on the title verso. In a very half-hearted advertising campaign, Chapman and Hall announced that an illustrated library edition of Our Mutual Friend was ready in 1867, but it would seem that they did no more than bind up the few trial copies dated 1866, which were then sold to subscribers of the entire series. If this conjectured scenario is correct, then perhaps 10 or at most 20 sets ever entered the UK market, explaining in part why such an edition was never even imagined by earlier bibliographers. Which brings me to my final question. The first illustrated library edition of Our Mutual Friend, printed specifically for the UK market, was published in 1869 with 500 sets being printed. In September 1868, it had appeared in the Charles Dickens edition in a highly respectable print run of 20,000. This was in turn preceded by the cheap edition, dated 1868, but on sale in November 1867. 2,000 copies were printed, but probably just 500 or so were sold in the original format, before the rest were offloaded to and repurposed by W. H. Smith's so-called, and very misleadingly called, People's Edition which leaves the 10 or 20 sets of the illustrated library edition in a trial printing and dated 1866 that found their way onto the UK market in April 67 as the second UK edition of Our Mutual Friend. Was there a UK illustrated library edition of Our Mutual Friend dated 1867, as stated in a variety of scholarly sources? Personally, I very much doubt it, and there's no record of any such printing in the publisher's archive. That said, if any of you have such a copy, or know of such a copy, I'd be very interested in hearing from you. But if you have a two-volume set dated 1866, or even a copy of the cheap edition dated 1868, take very good care of them, as they're almost as rare as hen's teeth. Say cheese! <laughs> Oh, no way! That's all, folks.